Good morning, everyone. Rise and shine. My name is Reynolds Adolph. And if my face looks new to you here, that's because I am new, having just recently joined the Visual Studio Code team as a developer advocate. So I want to give you guys a little bit of information about myself. For quite some time, I've been a software developer and then recently started doing a bunch of online courses which led me to doing advocacy work, which led me to here with you fine folks. So I have a question for you guys today. Drop a one in the comments if you guys are minimalists, minimalism, a big fan of minimalism. It's like a whole movement now. There's even a documentary on Netflix about it. I'm like a big fan of uh, minimalism. And specifically, I don't know if you guys, uh, if you all experience this also on my desktop, I like to have like a clean desktop with barely any icons, um, as opposed to having a hundred icons. No offense to desktop hoarders out there. Uh, some of my best friends are desktop hoarders. Drop a hundred if you drop, if you have like a hundred icons on your desktop. I don't judge. Drop the number of icons that you, you tend to have on your desktop. That'll be interesting to see in the chat. We got 10,000 here by why is Bob not allowed? Nice. <laughs> as long as you're in peace with that, with that 10,000, that's actually 100,000. Brandon Haynes got 1,000. They call me two, had zero. All right, I get it. Um, you know where I do have an issue with, with hoarding is like when I go out as a remote person working somewhere outside the house at a Starbucks or whatever, I tend to bring like a bunch of monitors. I'm like one of those three monitors for life type of people. Any monitor uh, hoarders out there? Drop a three if you like to carry around three monitors for everything you do, even if it's just texting. I want to bring, we're going to bring, uh, in the spirit of minimalism, we're going to have a nice discussion about that because sometimes you don't even need all that. You could actually do development from your iPad and that's going to be what's going to be demonstrated today by our special guest. Just one monitor for Axe 0101. I get it, man. Sometimes that's all we need. But this time we're even going to go more extreme than that with just one iPad. So let's go ahead and uh, meet our guest, Carlos, and uh, learn a little bit more about this. Carlos Cabanero. How you doing, Carlos? Hey, Ronald. Hey, everyone. How's everyone doing today? So excited to hear about this, because, um, you know, like, even though I'm used to, like, having a bunch of uh, three monitors, carrying that around, but sometimes it's just, Nice to just have things uh, simple, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, definitely, I I do agree. I I have been uh, I always loved uh, taking uh, the iPad or just like a mobile device as small as possible as I can, right? And mm -hmm. uh, taking it to the extreme, basically, right? So that is why we ended up doing this app. Just like, hey, like let's go all crazy. Let's see what's what we can do, right? And uh, and that's the story of how we started uh, working on Blink, right? Um, so did you did you learn about did you start doing this um, as a team? It was related to work, or did you like experiment with just trying to code on an iPad on your own first, and then yeah? So uh, so yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, the way everything started was I always uh, I've always been coding, never from my laptop or never from one single machine. Uh, I've always been coding in uh, cloud machines, right? And mm -hmm. this was like, uh, we're talking like 10 years ago, uh, something like that. And uh, the reason why I did that is because uh, sometimes like, or for the project that I was working back then, um, I required to run very, very like long running uh, tests uh, that sometimes require like a, a very strong connection, right? Uh, just trying to trigger some bugs and stuff like that, right? So that's how I started working, uh, like never from my laptop uh, and always from like uh, remote machines, right? Uh, so then at one point, 
uh, I figure out like, okay, so I do not, if I do not really need to carry my laptop anymore, what is the smallest device that I can take with me, right? And um, that is when I started uh, to uh, take the, the iPad. And, um, but the problem back then was like, there were no really serious apps for developers. Right. Uh, meaning that, you know how we developers like to customize everything in our experience, right? Like for example, I'm a, I love to have the command key being controlled uh, or I love to have uh, caps uh, as escape, right? Uh, things yeah. like that, small, super small details, but that like for us make the whole experience, right? And um, so that's how we started to work on Blink Shell. Uh, we said like, wait, let's do like the perfect terminal for it, right? Um, nice. And now like everything is switching uh, from I just want to have a terminal to work from to I want to develop from this device. So how far, like, what is the next step? How can we do this, right? And um, in Blink, we are not that interested on, and we're going to see it like what you're able to do locally on the iPad and how far you can take it. But as you can imagine, like, uh, if, um, if I have not been even like working from my laptop since, I don't know, 10 years ago, uh, for me, it's everything like how Blink can help you connect to your rest of the environments, right? And uh, how far can we take this idea of remote development, right? And, um, and so that's, uh, that's mainly what we will be uh, focusing today. Uh, basically, like giving you an idea of or, or a walkthrough and, um, uh, and the whole setup of how you can code on the go. Right. Nice. Code and so, so one of our users just mentioned, Alex actually was mentioning, oh, I can't code without the external keyboard. That was the first thing that I was thinking also. And we we're going to have this talk. And I think you're going to like mention that, right? Like the different comfort levels, whether you choose to use like a external mm -hmm. keyboard with it and also just with the, the iPad, right? Exactly. Like uh, you obviously cool. like you can now connect like uh, external keyboards and all of that. But we were going to see that uh, thumb type coding. It's a, it's a thing. I'm going to show you. <laughs> and right. it's really, really relaxing to just sit on the couch and be like some type coding, you know? It doesn't feel like work at all. So that's very cool. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, let's check it out. By the way, I called Alex uh, one of our users. I meant to say viewers. All right. You're not a user, Alex. You're a viewer. Viewer for life. All right. Let's check it out. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Uh, so first of all, you obviously do have to install the app, right? Uh, the App Store, just you can find us as Blink Shell. Uh, you will we'll see two apps. It's uh, the the current one is Blink Shell and Code Editor. I uh, just feel free to download it. It's a free download. Uh, we are also open source, so if you want to, you can actually uh, check it out on GitHub. Uh, give us a star, and uh, you can actually download it and compile it yourself and have everything working on your own. Um, so this being said. I have Blink already running here, right? And um, one interesting thing is that, you know, like uh, uh, I love this, uh, well, uh, Apple has now this tagline uh, talking about like your next computer is not a computer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so for us is, uh, when the moment I hear this is like, like uh, yeah, it's, it's not gonna be a single computer. It's gonna be many computers, right? And it's uh, for, for us developers, this means like not just phones, or tablets and everything, but as we were saying, like virtual computers, right? And um, that is uh, that is what we are going to be covering today: how we can configure everything uh, to go with the remote computer. So let me jump now. I'm going to enable my iPad camera, so you guys can see me here typing. Nice. All right. This way, and, you, uh, you know it's you for sure typing and not somebody else behind the scenes, right? Exactly. That's very important. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so now um, let's do uh, like as, as I was saying, like uh, Blink. Blink starts with a simple terminal, right, where you can type commands. Uh, mm -hmm. The usual thing that you would do in a computer is to install packages and all of that. Uh, in Blink, we want to focus on how you connect to to other environments, right? So, although you can have like a uh, commands like list or cat, uh, stuff like that. Like I can, for example, cat uh, a file. Um, and the, the main goal is that you connect to other, and we connect you to other tools to, to do your job, right? And one of those tools is code. It's Visual Studio Code. So we run Visual Studio Code. 
And as you can see, this is now Visual Studio Code for web, okay? And uh, to make everything work, uh, Blink needs to install this extension, which is called BlinkFS. Okay. And now when we're here, we're gonna see that the moment I have this extension installed, now it is listing all of the files on my local iPad, okay? The same files that I was listing before, now you can see them here. So for example, I can even uh, open logs from Blink and I have like super nice coloring, right? Nice. Uh, syntax okay. coloring. Mm -hmm. I can also, like if you have, for example, files on iCloud, I can, uh, for example, I was here planning to do the, uh, the markdown for the, uh, and all of these files will be then shared across your devices. So uh, it's a good way to, to keep everything updated, right? And um, another use case for me here is uh, sometimes I download code uh, just to read it, right? Like uh, I may go on a plane, I know I may not have internet, so I may want to read the stuff, right? Uh, so for example, here I have a project that I downloaded. Um, okay. So that's local on your iPad. That is local on my iPad, correct, okay. yes. And it's using VS Code for web. Mm -hmm. The other, the other interesting thing here is uh, because we are using VS Code for web, we have access to the VS Code for web extensions, right? Um, mm -hmm. Some of my favorites, one that I use a lot is the Emacs one, awesome Emacs, right? And uh, this gives me, uh, like someone said, like it's very important for you to have uh, access to a hardware keyboard to code. So this extension actually works very well for that. And what it gives me, like let me, for example, if I'm opening this file, so I can now also, we're talking about thumb typing before. So if I do this, you see that I have a software keyboard here at the bottom, right? With the escape key, the control key, uh, this is the alt key, and this is the command key, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, I can now do control A to go to the start of the line. That's an image shortcut or I can open the Visual Studio Code palette with the command shift P, right? So mm -hmm. as I was saying, like, uh, like thumb type coding, it's really a thing with this, uh, with this whole setup, right? Is, uh, it more we select, you, yeah. is it more comfortable for you to use the keyboard on the iPad versus the external? Um, I actually, like, here's the thing. If I am maybe, let's say, five, 10 minutes, I need to check out something or I need to read some piece of code or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes like using the software keyboard is really good. And um, we made sure like the experience is like as top notch as it can be, right? Like for example, um, some, some Emacs shortcuts that I know uh, are always here. Like for example, I can do control X2 and I split the screen, right? Which is not, you know, it's not like, a, um, it's not easy to do through like all the menus and uh, doing touch, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's great to have all these things available. You know, it's, uh, it's one more thing. And, um, and I do use it a lot more than I thought, you know, um, than I thought I would. Yeah, definitely. Nice. Mm -hmm. so, so give this a try because it's, uh, it's definitely the way to go. Now, and is that, the default, have, yeah. is that the default font size or did you increase it? Someone just complimented on like the, the font size. They said it's really nice, nice font, by the way. It's, uh, it's the default, yeah. So we can increase it as well. Like I have here, increasing the font is something I do very often because I'm getting old and my eyes are, are not like what they used to be. So this is more like the, the font size I feel comfortable with, yeah, working with. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... Now the million dollar question is, we can read code, we can even write code, we can do a lot of things with the local files, but are we able to run this code, right? Uh, locally on the iPad. And um, let me go back to placing this on the, on the stand, on the keyboard. And the answer to that is you can run some stuff on the iPad. Like there are some apps uh, that allow you to do that. Okay. Uh, and come with, uh, we're going to, for example, showcase uh, Swift Playgrounds, right? right? Uh, so Swift Playgrounds, you can, for example, I have this, uh, this project here that I can open. And um, Swift Playgrounds gives you, uh, let me open now side by side the same project. 
on VS Code, right? So it's the same, whoops, let me move myself down, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the same project running on VS Code on one side on Swift Playgrounds. Swift Playgrounds, you see like the e-code editor is a little bit more bare bones, right? So a lot of times what I do is, um, let me go to the content view, here, I, here it is, right? So a lot of time, like for example, what we can do is we can have, we can edit with VS Code on one side, right? Mm -hmm. And then the moment I save the file, you're gonna see this is like, a, it gives us like hard reload, which is really, really cool, right? Uh, we could go ahead and like, a, I know. So it just uh, runs it on the file. Yeah. As you make changes, you're going to see the ch changes effective immediately, right? Exactly, yeah. We can yeah. change things, for example, here. I'm not gonna play a lot because I'm 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 not so good with that. But you see, like things are changing like straight away. Let's make this a horizontal stack instead, right? Mm -hmm. And um, see, so you can already do a lot with uh, with uh, VS Code plus uh, plus uh, an application that gives you a runtime, right? And uh, you could potentially even like run or like uh, uh, compile a whole application. Also, the other thing is. Here you don't have access, like to to have access to the files. You see, like it's very very limited. And uh, when you're running things with VS Code, you even have access to, for example, the package Swift. You know all the information. You can actually browse it. You can you can you can work as if you were in your computer, right? Um, so you definitely get a lot of extra just by doing the things this way, right? Nice. And um, so this is uh, this is what you can do basically today, right, on the, let's say, on the uh, on the local iPad, all right? Um, this is what everything is happening right now on the device, right? If, if anyone has any questions, just please feel free uh, to, to just, ask them or to, yeah. Someone um, just it's mentioned, great to, yeah, as we go. Someone just, Alex just mentioned, uh, he says, guest browser will also work, but Local hosting. Yeah, I, we're gonna see how we can make the browser stuff work in a in a better way. You can um, you can do some local hosting with other apps, as, as I was saying. Like they can give you a local browser. You can even like run some light uh, um, light uh, web servers. But I think like where everything works better is when we are doing things in in remote, right? You said so you were referring to HTML files. Um, HTML files, yes, I think like those would actually work kind of like the same as the markdown files. Those would actually work straight from, uh, let me see if I have here a uh, readme. Uh, yeah, those, uh, yeah, I need to restart it, but like uh, those should actually show here in the preview window of VS Code. Yeah, that should not be a problem. Yeah, for just straight uh, HTML files. Yeah. Cool. Yuri uh, Korolev says, uh, will keyboard keys repeat will work in Vim extension? Yes. So that is actually another very, very important thing, which is um, usually, for example, like uh, when you're working on the iPad with the external keyboard, even uh, when you're working on the web, things like as, as we were saying before no like important things for developers are like if you type an a and you leave the key it needs to do auto repeat right and mm -hmm. this is this has been a limitation on the ipad that we were actually able to to go through and that is part of the experience that you get with blink right um you can obviously run vs code for web inside the browser right uh, mm -hmm. but then you don't get the software keyboard you get you do not get this full screen uh, experience without any uh, artifacts like uh, address bars or like uh, I know if you if you have ever seen like usually there is a type in here uh, we can actually uh, we can open it like you see this these artifacts here that usually come up right when you're typing right mm -hmm. you never have those inside blink right so you can just focus focus on code right ah, okay um, Michael X says he asks uh, can you use blink shell and vs code built in terminal uh, so no you cannot because vs code for web uh, as you can see uh, the terminal is not available but 
because Blink is a terminal itself, you can just open a new tab and then you can have a local terminal. Or as we were going to see, uh, you can also connect to your remote machines and then open mm -hmm. the remote terminal on, in there, right? Um, uh, we will also see uh, with uh, code spaces. Uh, with code spaces, you can definitely use the terminal on code spaces. We will also see that later. Got it. Here's another uh, good question here. Anonymous Junior. Yeah, Anani Mouse Junior uh, <laughs> says, I noticed my iPad that it takes a while to load up for VS Code. Does this mean that older iPads would make the launch slower? How is this uh, working with older iPads? So it's working great with uh, older iPads. And um, so Blink, uh, as long as you can update to the latest iOS, uh, you're going to be fine with uh, with Blink. Yeah. The experience, I got to say, like this is mostly uh, BS Code for web. And as long as the BS Code for web experience, uh, it's, it's super, like I got to say, like they made a great, great, um, like the BS Code for Web team has made a great effort to optimize things. And uh, it, it, you can really see it. Like everything is super fast. Everything is super snappy. So uh, so I don't think like you're going to have a problem with uh, with all the iPads. Mm -hmm. Nice. So is this going to be uh, an ongoing project in terms of like creating like new versions coming out like every six months? Or uh, where do we kind of like see yeah. things going? We usually we usually release. Uh, I mean, this is an ongoing project. We have already been doing this for like uh, five years, and we usually release new versions. Uh, we try to do like every couple of weeks or so. Mm -hmm. So the moment we see something breaking or something that is not integrated properly, we try to fix it as soon as we can. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's. Uh, we can move on to to the next thing. So this was everything locally. All right. Okay. Now let me close this. I can close it with a uh, command W. Uh, it's just like closing a, a tab on the browser, right? And mm -hmm. now let's say, for example, in our use case, let me move myself to the center. So now our use case, it's uh, imagine uh, you leave your computer, you left your laptop at the office, right? Or you may have a Raspberry Pi that you may use for a Minecraft server at home uh or i know or to run your your uh your hardware projects right okay. so let's see how we can connect from our ipad and how we can connect the same bs code for the web to those remote devices and uh work from them okay, okay. so cool. in this scenario like let's say for example i have my computer at the office right mm -hmm. so the first thing i do is like we need to figure out well first the first thing that we need to know is like we need to somehow connect to that computer, right? And uh, for this, uh, myself, I would recommend an app called Tailscale. Uh, Tailscale basically creates, uh, gives you a private network between your devices. And it's super easy. You just need to install the app uh, on each of your, uh, like your computers or your, your devices, and they will, uh, they will be accessible through uh, through this IP always, right? Okay, and you said so, Tailscale as in T-A-I-L? S C A L E. Okay. Yes, that's available everywhere. It's available in uh, Mac, Windows, Linux, anywhere. And okay. You can install it on your servers, on your Raspberries, on your whatever you want. Uh, so, for example, I have it here on my Mac Mini. Let's say this is my Mac Mini at the office, right? Mm -hmm. So, to configure the host, I'm gonna open. Sorry, you can open config uh, with config, and then we go hosts. And uh, I already have it here configured. I called it M. Uh, this is the IP, uh, my username, and the password that I use. And okay. uh, this is similar to what you would configure, let's say, if you were using uh, SSH, right? Uh, That's really what we are going to be using, uh, SSH or Mosh to connect to it, OK? So it's, uh, it's the same typical connection that you would do. So for example, if now I'm going to use Mosh, that it's a uh, it's a similar application to SSH, but it's more efficient for mobile devices as okay. it works uh, over. Uh, so SSH works over TCP and Mosh works over UDP. So it's more efficient and faster. All right. So that's all it takes. And I'm now connected to my Mac Mini. All right. And now the problem is if I had to work from here, right, I would be limited to a terminal. I could run Emacs or Beam. But I don't want to do that. Right. So let's say what 
how we can connect the code to this. And uh, we are going to open an or tab. And what I'm going to do on the files app, you can also see that Blink gives me access to those same files on the remote, right? And I can open here. I can see here I have my projects, right? So let's say I want to start editing Blink docs, right? Uh, the, mm -hmm. This is the documentation that we have for Blink. I long tap on it, and then I can do code. This is going to take me back to Blink. Wow, OK. And, boom. and now I am browsing the my Blink docs project inside VS Code, right? So you guys can see the FAQ here. I could even, oops, it's not working today. I'll, we'll give it another chance later. But yeah, you can see like all the markdown files here. Uh, you can, uh, um, uh, let's say for example, I have a typo here. Um, so some of the, uh, someone noticed like some of the, our uh, BS codes, uh, we had them like this instead of like the proper BS code thing, right? So let's mm -hmm. see, for example, this is this is a project that is living on my remote computer. So how can I do to, to change things? Um, so back to the terminal, as you say, like you do not have a terminal here, right? Mm -hmm. We cannot open it here. This one is not enabled because this is VS Code for web. But as Blink is a terminal, we have the terminal here. So we have a full screen, full terminal. So I'm going to go to access, my folder. So you access your Mac mini. Exactly. Right? Yes. That yes. might be located yes. somewhere else. Yeah, it's uh, the computer we left at the office, right? And uh, we want to work from it, so we want to see how how it works, right? Yeah. So, so questions. Um, so, then. I'm thinking for the Mac Mini, would it have had to stay on, or would it have like woken up? You know, if mm -hmm. it's just sitting there. Yes. With the screen so. Back? Yes. So in this case, the Mac mini is acting kind of like a server, right? It's something that it's always on. Uh, you can definitely also use it. Uh, let's say if you have a machine on Azure, for example, that is the way I've been coding uh, for, for years, just having like a develop machine remotely uh, that I maintain and everything. And uh, it's always accessible through an IP, right? Okay. Um, it can be on your internal network or it can be on the remote network. Um, if you have a Raspberry Pi around, you can also use it in this way. Um, a cool thing if you're using a Raspberry Pi is like, as someone was saying before, installing the whole Visual Studio code may be a lot for, for a small Raspberry Pi, right? Um, but if you're using uh, Visual Studio code in this way, using VS Code for the web and using Blink to connect to it, then it's a lot, lot more lighter. That so is super it's, a, cool. it's a great option. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Those are questions coming in. Uh, Fatiu Kim, Kim asked, uh, can we use Docker container? He says that he sees a warning, a warning about web version on remote, con re remote container extension page. Yes. So you cannot use, uh, I mean, uh, you can use a remote container if you connect over SSH or over Mosh to it. Uh, so that is also like an, another way to, to do it. Um, yeah, so you, you can definitely use containers, but you cannot at the moment use the uh, Docker container extension just because it's not supported yet on VS Code for web. But we're thinking about like, that is definitely in our roadmap. So maybe in the future, we can actually uh, also offer Blink as, as the glue between a VS Code and your remote containers, definitely. Cool. Ax, uh... That's a very good question. Ax0101 uh, is a big fan of uh, tail scales. He said it's amazing. It's a lifesaver. It's good to know. Yes, it is. It's uh, it doesn't get any simpler than that. And uh, it's uh, so before if you had to set up a VPN, it would take a long time. You will also need your own server and everything. And they definitely made it super easy. Yeah. Uh, Sabine, and, um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. You, you, you go ahead. Yeah, I already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to uh, say uh, Sabino Paluselli uh, asks if he, if uh, they can install SSWG Swift extension. Um, I have no idea, but I guess like you can try it yourself. Yeah. Uh, uh, so 
One of the I things is like a, I, didn't know, I didn't know if it was a typo, if that was like a new acronym for something that I'm <laughs> that I haven't heard. Of. I, said, I know I've heard of Swift. I know that. Yep. I know Swift. Like getting all fancy <laughs> with this SSWG. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of extensions definitely are already working, but I would make like a, a call to developers to, you know, uh, try to. If if you're like a, a BS Code extension developer, try to make it work for the for the web too, because I think like a, it definitely has like a very uh, it it's gonna it's gonna like a, uh, um, um, it's gonna make it a, not just available to a lot more people, but I think like it's also the way in the future for like a lot of use cases. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, Sabino, so mm -hmm. let us know. Give it a try. Uh, I definitely like yes. would to know also. Put in the comments afterwards. Um, was there something else you were going to like uh, mention? I don't know if yes. You're so so we have here. So we are now in our. This is my Blink Docs um, um, folder, right? Uh, because I'm on the remote computer. Let me run this project, right? I can do docu or start. Uh, this is the way, I mean, it's a, it's a DocuSorrows documentation. So I can mm -hmm. run it this way. And you see, I'm mapping it to 000, zero, zero okay, which is the internal, I mean, like that. So I'm exposing it uh, everywhere, definitely. Uh, and I want to do that because I want to uh, make sure that uh, I can access it then uh, from the iPad, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll leave this thing here. Now let's open it. And the IP was uh, 179, uh, 47, 96, 3000 was the port. It's not loading. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, it's still compiling. Sorry about that. Let's, uh, let's retry this. Ah, uh, yeah. What uh, bug out the server from? Come down not the server from? Blah, blah. Let me see. Yeah, probably mm -hmm. it's running now. Meanwhile, Anonymous uh, Jr. asks, what is, what is the download option for downloading Git repos? Like, for example, a PKG download, star for term up. Yes. So, uh, what is the download option for download Git repos? Like, package download uh, for term ups. So, yeah, so as I was saying, uh, Blink gives you uh, Blink gives you a terminal, but it's a very simple terminal. Like you cannot do like uh, it's not like Termux that it's a, a full uh, Linux uh, running on the device, right? Mm -hmm. And the way we, we kind of like it like this, uh, keeping it simple because it also allows us to, um, you know, like we, we think like you should not really use this or pollute these devices with uh, development environments, you know, uh, that is another thing, you know, like, uh, we, we all, uh, if we are all going to be moving to repeatable, uh, development environments, I think like having, or, uh, I, I even, even I don't like to have a full development environment in a laptop or a computer. I prefer uh -huh. it to be just like somewhere else where I can get rid of when I'm not using it, you know? So, mm -hmm. Uh, so here we are just offering you the tools that you need to connect to those environments. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to keep life Let me simple. see if I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I know why it's not uh, running this guy now. Uh, let me see. Is there a clean here? Oops. No. And, uh, is there a uh, clear? Okay. So let's try this again. I may have been running this thing a hundred times and <laughs> I probably sure. messed up with it. For, <laughs> for some of the viewers that just uh, jumped in, what are we doing right now specifically? Yeah, so uh, I had this, uh, so we had this uh, project here uh, that was running on, uh, so this is the, the Blink documentation, right? Mm -hmm. And I wanted to see you like, this is uh, editing files in remote. And I wanted to show you how you can actually uh, run that code on the remote using the terminal. Uh, like, uh, so VS Code for Web does not offer you a terminal, but Blink does. So you can run them. 
and then you could access them here on the browser at the same time. And then you will see like cool things like how reload also working for web projects and things like that. But it doesn't look like it wants to collaborate today. So we may have to move to the next. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's yeah. good to know that that is uh, possible. But you know, these are all mm -hmm. like in the works and in, still in development. So it's good to know mm -hmm. it's on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is definitely possible, and that is the way that uh, you would do it. Um, there must be a way to clean the project, but uh, I have forgotten. And uh, it doesn't look like the MPX. Let's try it again, just in case. Start, yeah. And if I do not start at this host, just very quickly. Yeah, see, it's like this should be moving up to 100, but it doesn't want to. And if I do MPX, Docusaro's build. Oh, now maybe we're more lucky. Let's see. A uh, splat tab asks, when's on the go coding on Android? <laughs> Android life is uh, here. <laughs> It's gonna have to be yeah uh, someone else yeah we cannot we cannot do everything ourselves sorry <laughs> yeah now it's moving okay so I can show you this now uh, let's wait it's uh, compiling okay so the client compiled successfully mm -hmm. and I can now open this URL yeah okay here we are okay so this nice. is now running in my remote Mac okay and let's say for example we can now go to uh, advanced. I was editing this code file, right? So instead of VS code, let's say I want to do VS space code, right? And you uh -huh. see like, I can change yeah. this is all reloaded. Hello from Blink code. Let's save it. See? That's so awesome. you can definitely do a lot of, a lot of web development in, uh, in this way. All right. And uh, this is uh, connected though. to remote. Yeah. I've always I've I've I fell in love when I first started like developing and started using like features like Hotspot where you immediately sent see your changes instead of just like all right let's execute it now switch over uh, check out the results go back you know this is hmm. I will never take that for granted. Sorry. I no. Yeah. Heard. Definitely. It's a uh, it's a great fantastic feature to have, and I, and it's almost like magical that you can connect VS Code for web to something that is running in a remote server somewhere, you know, and uh, being able to connect to it like uh, over a VPN in this way, you know, and just continue coding and like uh, just doing this from, from an iPad, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody, um, Ax0101 says, I suppose I cannot use something like Brew on a Blink shell? No, so uh, there is no package manager and uh, the way everything is planned is that you you always uh, connect to a remote computer somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Okay. And part of this is like we were now connecting to my uh, a remote my remote uh, server. In this case, my remote uh, Mac where I have this code. And then uh, what we are gonna see now is I can also connect to uh, to GitHub uh, code spaces. All right. So okay, let's cool. see how that works. So let me, I'm gonna close here the connection to my mic, right? Starting all over again. And let's do that. I'm gonna now make myself smaller here. <laughs> Pranav so, uh, Purwar asked what program is on the left? I believe he was referring to Visual Studio Code when, I mean, because those were the icons that were on the left. What Did do you mean? Go? Like, uh, yes, so this is Blink on the left and a Safari on the right. Okay. Yeah, when yeah. he asked the question, Visual Studio Code icons were on the left, so I wasn't sure if he was referring to that or or Blink itself. So uh, let's say, for example, and this is now, um, I think, like a great way to, to start coding. Um, and uh, now that everyone is trying to make all their uh, code environments available on code spaces, um, so in my case, for example, I'm starting to learn Rust, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, wish me luck. Uh, 
And uh, there is a very simple code spaces example for it. And okay. uh, that I totally recommend. And uh, there are many, many code spaces examples for different languages, but you can very simply just use this code space and let's say Rasp Playground. Okay. Okay. I can create a repository. Boom. Generating it. It'll take just a few seconds. All right. So we have now how do we run this repository? And you can actually do this with any of your current repositories on GitHub. It's like you can go to code and you mm -hmm. can create a new code space. And now you will see it says open this code space in VS Code desktop. And we say yes. And Blink is offering to open it when you have Blink installed. So Blink kind of hooks as if it was like a desktop app. So if you press open, oh, okay. Blink takes over. I can move myself now here to the corner again. <laughs> It's now building the container. It may take a few seconds in this case. Let's enable the locks. This is so cool. If someone just jumped on the, the session right now and was looking at your screen, it probably wouldn't even think iPad right away. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Definitely. Uh, so one, so this is, I feel like the most important part for the code space and what I love about code spaces is that as I was saying, I do not like to pollute my computer with dependencies, uh, multiple runtimes for for a single language, right? And uh, the marvel of all of this is like, let's say, for example, I have five, 10 minutes and I want to check out something, uh, something on the code, or as I was saying, I'm learning Rust, uh, I may be on the subway and I don't feel like, you know, uh, opening my laptop or something like that, right? Right, so right. this is a super quick, fast way to uh, the initial setup always takes like a little bit longer. Um, mm -hmm. But once you have that in your repository, it's super, super fast to, to start coding. And as we will see uh, now on this remote machine that on code spaces is, uh, is free, it's, it's where you can actually start installing packages, uh, go crazy with the uh, dependencies, you know, uh, do anything you want with it. And the moment you're done, then boom, like it, it can delete it and you don't have to continue depending on, on so many things, right? So container is started, the workspace, the code space is being configured. This will take a second, boom. And you see, I still have, it's, uh, so this is all VS code, right? So yeah. it's still, and now it's connected to code space, but it still has my previous theme it still has my previous everything as I had it before, right? Um, I can now go to the code. And here, you can see that now we have the full uh, full terminal. And I think this is actually Ubuntu. So we could do an app to get an update or whatever we want to here, right? Um, and as I was saying, like another cool thing is you can sit on the couch with this. You can do this. <laughs> You can open here a file and then, hey, how about, I don't know, uh, let's create a typical thing on um, on Rust, right? And um, mm -hmm. hello, let's pass it uh, to, see, and here we are getting all of the cool stuff from, um, from code spaces, like all of the suggestions and stuff like that, right? to let's do a string. How's the performance when the internet connection is low? Like, let's say you're using a hotspot, like your phone hotspot, you see like a big difference or you could like still pull it off? Actually, you're gonna still pull it off and it's great because uh, here is the thing, like uh, everything, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it's not running anything locally. Um, the file, once you have it downloaded once then um, it doesn't have to re-download, so it's very, very low on the connection. And it works. Uh, it works really well. So, for nice. example, let's create this function, and I can do print line, and uh, boom. And so uh, we can do. Yeah. Uh, Carlos Ruiz asked, "How much sp storage space does this use up on your iPad?" 
uh, it doesn't use any storage. That is the marvel of it. Uh, so you only have to download Blink, and Blink is very light. It only requires five megabytes because you're connecting always to remote devices that are doing all the processing for you. Uh, you can use these on uh, on uh, older iPads, uh, iPads with like very few uh, space. You can use this even on your iPhone if you wanted to. That's great. You hear that, Carlos? Yeah. So you could use your space for other important stuff like selfies and whatnot. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So another cool thing, for example, is like you can see here uh, the uh, because I'm running uh, the uh, the code lens is already detecting that this is Rust. This is a function that we can run, right? Mm -hmm. So we can just tap on it and see. Boom. It's running, and a hello world from from here at the bottom. You can see it. Yeah. Uh, what else? Yeah. Uh, another thing is like when you are when you are using touch, uh, you usually lose all of the hover uh, events, right? So, mm -hmm. for example, here I'm not getting, I cannot get like information about the function print line, right? So uh -huh. what I can do is again because I have access to the software keyboard. I can do control command K command I and boom, I can get it pop out for me. See, so I'm going to do this again. <laughs> that's pretty so cool. yeah, it's uh, from the software keyboard. I can do command K command I and boom, it, it will bring it down for me. So you definitely need to have a, a software keyboard, a powerful software keyboard like this one, right? To be able to, uh, to to play like when you're on the go. And yeah, and I'm, I'm holding it like this, all right? Like, <laughs> and you can do some typing. This is what I'm doing right now. <laughs> so, so that's a third party software keyboard that you're using? No, so this is, uh, Blink comes with this uh, built-in keyboard. As you can see, like the bottom part is uh, the same typical iOS keyboard, right? Okay. But the row at the top, right? Where you have escape or you have, for example, the, the arrows, right? You uh -huh. see, like I'm that's, moving that's the arrows now. Blink yep. added that, that is Blink only. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. okay. That is part of Blink, yeah. That is an add-on inside Blink, yes. All right, so the bottom part is the standard keyboard that comes with iOS, and mm -hmm. the top part is with uh, Blink, the first row. Exactly, exactly, right. yes. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, so this is how you can uh, definitely... Uh, Go crazy, install other, you know, uh, other packages, anything you need, you know, uh, you have like a full terminal here, full code space. And uh, even if you have like very, very large code bases, uh, code spaces is, uh, is really ready for it. Uh, we have used it for, or I have been using it for like even, even to develop Blink itself. Like you can, you can actually go to uh, our GitHub repository and have it running inside a, inside a code space. So it's uh it's really good. It's uh, it's super cool, and yeah, nice. just uh, give it a try. Yeah, people are pounding in questions here. Um, Curious Drive asks. Uh, she's they're like, hey, I, am I late to the party? Is there an Android version? Yeah, somebody asked that already. Um, we don't have an Android <laughs> version right now. Um, so for everyone that's on uh, Apple, aren't you happy you're on Apple right now? You're gonna have to be missing out on the party. Someone else, I, they don't have a name. They just have symbols. I can't read the symbols. It's question mark. Yeah, I, I don't mean that's not even a question mark. But they said they ask, uh, what iPad model are you currently using right now? So yeah, this is uh, currently this is an uh, iPad Air. Mm -hmm. So an it's iPad uh, Air? yes. So it's not the latest and greatest. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, as I was saying, like you can you can run Blink pretty much anywhere. And um, you do not need to have like a full, uh, like super powerful machine. And uh, the cool thing about this idea or developing this way is that you can have a, com a very, very small computer just to, I don't know, uh, start writing some code. But then on the next day you can, let's say if you are doing machine learning, then you can, you can power on a super, gigantic machine on Azure to do all of this for you, right? And uh, you're going to still code from it from just uh, any terminal like uh, like an iPad as I'm doing right now. <laughs> Can we run Node.js with Blink? Jason GH asks. 
So not inside Blink, as I was saying, but you can, uh, what I did on the previous demo was that I was connecting to my Mac and on my Mac, I can run anything or in any other server or like a Raspberry Pi that you have uh, running around. <laughs> Got it. Alex asked, uh, could you show other Blink commands like Unix utils and Blink commands like this face cam? Yes, so yeah, we have a few other commands. Uh, you have some, uh, you can, for example, ping, right? Mm -hmm. um, other commands that we have, uh, there is a full list in here, right? You can okay. do a tab and then get a full list. So it's uh, definitely some of the ones that you expect to have from, uh, from like a regular super small Unix, right? Uh, another cool thing is you can do SFTP, right? Or SCP as well uh -huh. uh, to move files between uh, machines if you want to copy them. Um, you also have access to the files inside the files app, right? So for example, here I am connected to, this is my remote Mac, right? And I can have access here to this. Uh, these are my current projects, right? Okay. Uh -huh. I can browse them with this and, um, I can even like open the files uh, using the files app. This is not the best experience, obviously, because I mean, there is no markdown uh, reader for it. It also connects to other apps. Like for example, I have this block quote app. This is a app to do markdown, right? Mm -hmm. And if, uh, for example, let's say I'm gonna open this project here and I have a change log, right? Uh -huh. This is, Again, this is connected to my Mac. This is a file on my Mac, right? And I'm accessing as if it was local on my iPad. It's just like super fast to do everything. And yeah. uh, I can definitely edit here or see a split of Markdown on one side and preview on another, right? And if I mm -hmm. make any change here. And all the things that you're will, doing are like it. really yeah. smooth and quick. All the things that you're doing looks really smooth and quick right now. Because when we were going through like rehearsal, rehearsal for this, uh, we we're wondering if there was going to be like a lag also in like the video. But mm -hmm. no, I don't see that. Now, um, Yuri Karolev asked, what about external displays or Apple TV? Which it kind of feels like we're going backwards. <laughs> but I, I guess I don't know if there's somehow you could connect your Apple TV. Yeah, it's like... You're uh, walking yeah, into so... Starbucks with an Apple TV and then you have your iPad that you're going to connect to it. Yeah, so mind. actually, yeah, uh, Blink, uh, if you connect to, uh, to, if you connect to, uh, through a cable, uh, USB-C cable to a monitor or to, through Apple TV, uh, Blink will give you a full terminal on the remote external display too, which is really cool. Wow, okay. For example, if you're doing a presentation, uh, you can actually do and give a presentation on the from an iPad with uh, with with Blink as well. Yeah, um, I use it like that sometimes too. Like uh, just connect it to an external display because it feels like you know just a terminal and that's it. Just a terminal and a keyboard mm -hmm. without any other distractions of the operating system. As you were saying, like minimalist right at the beginning. Uh, so right. that is the ultimate minimalist setup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. nice. We already have a lot of users who like go crazy, even like they use it with curved displays, you know, and uh, mechanical keyboards. So, you know, you can definitely do it. You can you can go crazy. <laughs> cool. Um, Mehdi, we kind of addressed this earlier. Uh, Mehdi asks, uh, sorry, I just joined the live. So can so we can compile codes with blank or not? Question mark. Yes. So as I was saying, uh, you, you cannot compile it inside. So locally on the iPad, your options are really, really limited, right? Uh, there are apps that will offer you runtimes uh, for Python. There are apps that offer runtimes for uh, Go, for Swift, right? As uh, we were seeing, we were, uh, we were showing it with, uh, with uh, Swift Playgrounds, right? Right. Uh, the cool thing with Blink is uh, Blink can connect to those apps, so you can use PS Code, as I was doing before. You can use Code to edit your code, mm -hmm. right? As we had here, 
for example, with this app, this is a Swift app. You can use uh, VS Code to edit it, and then again, Swift Playgrounds to run it, or whatever other app you want to use to run it. Mm -hmm. And you will mm -hmm. see that everything happens in real time. Nice. So what see? do you see on the horizon uh, with uh, Blink? Um, anything that you're really excited about in future uh, development? Yeah, so uh, we're really, really happy with, uh, with the current integration with uh, code. Uh, we definitely want to do more and simplify the way that you are able to start all of these uh, sandboxes, right? Or uh, someone before suggested uh, Docker containers, no? And things like that, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, so some of you may be familiar with the... So uh, VS Code has very, very powerful extensions for... Uh, to develop inside containers or to develop over SSH, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So that is definitely the direction that we want to continue exploring. Uh, basically, using Blink as the glue that connects your iPad uh, with a VS Code on one side and then those containers or remote machines on the other, right? Uh, so we can... Uh, so, for example, right now, you do not have access uh, on VS Code for the web. You do not have access to uh, language servers, uh, language suggestions, code syntax. Uh, like, uh, you get some code syntax coloring, and you get definitely suggestions uh, from the static uh, analyzer. But all those language features would be really, really powerful if we were to connect Blink to uh, to those uh, remote computers for processing, yes. So that is uh, that is what we want to continue working on. Mm -hmm. um, your asks about the pricing, Yuri Korolev. This is all free. This is on the house. Yes. So everything is uh, everything is free. Uh, there is uh, if you are a new user, uh, then you will see uh, you can download it for free. You can uh, even like compile it and install it yourself. Um, there is also a community version. If you don't want to compile it yourself, um, then you can sign up for our community and help us with testing and everything. And the way that we are making money is uh, we we are adding like a, we added a yearly subscription. Uh, it's only uh, twenty dollars per year, uh, so it's really really cheap. We're not gonna make the comparison between coffees and <laughs> coffees per month, but uh, like uh, I guess it would be like. Uh, a little bit more than a dollar per month, and um, we think like it's a it's a great app that it's a, it's a, with with the support of uh, of more users, we can definitely take it to the to the next level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, in the spirit of minimalism, this definitely feels like less is more here. So, this has been awesome. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate this uh, presentation and all and all the different features that you uh, showed us. So. Um, Thank you. Yeah, let yeah. me now move move away from here. <laughs> back to <laughs> yeah, back to you here. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no no problem. And thanks a lot. All right, um, this has been great, and there, it seems like everybody was really engaged and excited about this, Carlos. Yeah, happy. Yeah, happy to see there were a lot of questions, and uh, thanks everyone. And uh, if you have any questions, like uh, we have a Discord ourselves, or feel free to uh, write us on our Twitter. And um, and if you want to help us, like our community is What is, is your really Twitter, open. by the way? What, what is your Twitter? It's uh, at Blink Shell. Yeah. I have here on the name. Yeah. Yes. Cool. That's correct. And what else were you going to mention besides your uh, Twitter? No, yeah, just uh, reach us out. Uh, our community is fully open. Uh, we love to hear new ideas on GitHub, you know, people who are using our app, uh, sending us like crazy setups, as I was saying, like with uh, external displays or super minimalist ones. And uh, yeah, and I uh, hope like, uh, uh, hope more and more people find this useful uh, and hope like next time you guys are on the go and you can feel more comfortable about connecting to your computer in the office and, uh, and getting some work done. Thank you so much, Carlos. Carlos Cabanero, right? Correct. <laughs> Correct. Thanks, Thank you so Carlos. much, Reynald. Yeah, it'll be <laughs> great uh, being here with you today. All right. Thank you. So, yeah, Bye -bye, folks, this this has this concludes our stream today. 
but uh, make sure if you haven't, uh, definitely uh, subscribe for future streams. And also, we're doing a lot of stuff on TikTok. Since I've uh, joined a team, I started using TikTok, um, which is kind of cool to be able to say that you're working for Microsoft and I do TikToks for them. I make that face too when I when I tell I do TikToks. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, check us out on our uh, TikTok uh, channel. Um, and uh, I will see you guys in the next stream. Okay. Bye.